Hello everybody and welcome to IR Photo Tours and today we're going to be speaking about the disappoint my disappointment over the M50 Mark II. After this lovely old job. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to IR Photo Tours. Um, just a quick note to say apologies for not having a video out just recently. I've been incredibly busy in the workshop doing cabinetry and joinery. Um, it has gone crazy busy when it comes to the, the, the joinery side of my, my life. Um, and crazy busy also when it comes to the, uh, in, into the photography side of it. Thankfully, and I appreciate everyone out there that has been giving me the work. I have been, um, I have been very thankful of it. It's a sad time that we're in right now, and it seems to be getting bad again. But uh, let's move on. Um, let's try and keep a cheery, cheery face. Lovely old job. Well, firstly, can I just ask everyone if you like my channel, please just to consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification. Thank you very much. And right, today we are talking about disappointments in Canon. Mainly, mainly just one, one item really, and that's the Canon M50 Mark II. Quite frankly, I thought the M50, I don't know about you guys, but I thought the M50 Mark II would have been a little bit more than what it is. You would have thought that Canon would have come up with something a little better and a little bit more groundbreaking for their Mark II version of the M50. It is an APS-C sized sensor. It's a CMOS sensor. And it's, a, it's not the Digic X, it is the Digic 8. You know, it is, it is a good one. The Digic 8 was always a good one. Uh, the X is now coming to the Canon EOS R and the, R, the Canon EOS R6 and R5. And soon, soon, and the R1 as well. So they're, they're, I'm going to be talking about the R1 that's coming out soon as well. But let's concentrate on the M50 Mark II um, and see what the disappointments are there. So um, compare, let's compare the two. Let's compare the M50 Mark I and let's compare the M50 Mark II. So the M50 Mark I, what did that have? Let's go through the list. The Canon M50 Mark I was a 24.1 megapixel CMOS sensor. It has 4K movie recording, five axis image stabilization. So that's not bad. Um, it's not in, in body stabilization, IBIS. Um, it never was. It, it, so uh, only the R5 and the R6 has that right now. Um, dual pixel CMOS autofocus system, 10 frames per second at continuous shooting. That's nothing groundbreaking, but it was then about two, three years ago, I suppose. Wi-Fi, NFC, and Bluetooth connectivity, a three centimeter LCD screen uh, with touch and drag autofocus. Now that has changed, obviously, we've got full, full touch screen. Um, and the thing that I do like about the M50 compared to what I'm using right now, which is the M6 Mark II, and the only thing that I like about the M50 is the tilt and twisty screen, which you can tilt at any angle. It's a variable angle screen. Whereas the M6 Mark II just has a flip screen. Saying that, it's never really bothered me. Um, it's not a groundbreaker, but what is a groundbreaker for me and why I went for the M6 Mark II was because of the specifications of the M6 Mark II and how brilliant that camera really is and is. I'm, I'm using it now, I'm video on it right now in 4K. Uh, moving on, M50. Um, what did it have? So it had that screen, flip screen, has a large central uh, electronic viewfinder, the EVF. 
So that was inbuilt on the M50, whereas the M6 Mark II, there was no viewfinder, certainly not built in. You had to buy one separately or you bought one with the camera as a package. And I have one as well. So, and again, that doesn't really bother me because the actual viewfinder that you clip on and off the uh, Canon M6 Mark II, that's kept safely in a bag where I keep all my Canon M6 Mark II bits and pieces. Um, I keep my M6 Mark II separate to my full frame camera and my ERSR and all my other gear. And uh, basically the M6 Mark II has its own bag. Uh, for full of its all, all its bits that I use it for specifically. So nothing really gets lost, to be honest. Um, so it didn't bother me with the, the viewfinder is what I'm trying to say, the EVF. Going back to the M50 then, Digic 8 processor, we've already covered that. ISO range is 100 to 256,000, which is a massive uh, range in ISO, which is brilliant. Can be extended to 512,000 ISO. Now for a CMOS camera, I'm not sure that the, that noise, I'm, I'm, I'm going from my experience with cameras and having the 7D Mark I many years ago, it was quite a noisy sensor, it was a noisy camera. Um, and mainly because it's, a C, uh, it's, a, it's an APS-C sensor, so it's a cropped sensor. And the more cropped you get with sensors, that I, I really believe the more noise you get. So that range is massive for a, for a, for a, cam, uh, for a small uh, crop sensored camera. It has a built-in flash, which is great. So does the M6, the M6 has a, a built-in flash. There's little uh, videos that I've done in the past where you, you know, little, um, little tricks and tips about that pop-up flash and what you can do to enhance um, your portraiture with that pop-up flash. Uh, the, the nice thing about the M6 Mark II is the flash actually bends right back so you can hit the ceiling. That's a really nice feature on that. There are so many nice features on the M6 Mark II over and above the uh, M50. Um, so hence why I bought it. And I'm gonna carry on, probably carry on harping on about the M6 Mark II because it was, a, in my opinion, a, a superb camera over and above the M50. Except Canon M mount lenses. Okay, so that's the only thing that I would say, falling back about the M mount cameras, is, is the lack of, the, the lack of uh, Canon's ability or want to produce better lenses for them. Yet, here they are, M50 Mark II, building a new camera that's barely any different to the Mark I version and no extra lenses as such, is there? Why are they not concentrating on better M mount lenses? I am videoing right now on a Sigma F14 16mm lens, M mount. Sigma, thank you so much for doing Canon a massive favour, because you have. Canon, get a grip and get some M mount lenses, man. You got these rubbish 3.4 to 5, uh, 4.5 and 5.6 and 6.3 lenses. You got nothing fast as such in the M mount other than an F2 pancake lens, 22 mil, which is, in my opinion, for me, useless so you know at the end of the day i want a wide angled lens something like the 16 mil if not more than that so i can video and do uh, my vlogs and that's what i want and i also want to take it out and do vlogs around and hold it you know and you need a wide angle lens for vlogging so you need not only a wide angle lens, you need a fast wide angle lens because you get a better quality out of it. So really Canon need a kick up the bum when it comes to the M mount lenses. But there you go, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on because I could go on all day about it. I could really harp on about it. But anyway, let's get back to the M50 Mark 
one. Now the M50 Mark I had, uh, I'm, I'm gonna reiterate this, I'm gonna go through the list, I'm not gonna divert from it. So 24.1 megapixel CMOS sensor, 4K movie recording capability, five axis image stabilization, dual pixel CMOS autofocus system, 10 frames per second continuous shooting, Wi-Fi, NFC and Bluetooth connectivity, a three centimeter LCD screen with touch and drag autofocus, large central electronic viewfinder EVF, Digic 8 processing engine, ISO range from 100 to 256,000 and can be expanded to 512,000. Uh, Built-in flash, well, yeah, okay, whoopee do. Uh, accepts Canon M mount lenses. Yeah, I better move on. Um, right, so that's the Mark One. So what has the Mark Two got, guys? Why is the Mark Two? Now this is what you're waiting for, isn't it? Yay! We're finally getting there. Right, so Canon M50 Mark Two has it has a Digic8 processor. APS-C size and a CMOS sensor with approximately 24.1 million pixels, all right? No different to the first one. Equipped with 4K frame cutout. Function that saves any of frames as JPEG images of approximately 8.3 million pixels. Okay, equipped with a digital lens optimizer. That corrects lens aberration, etc. Does this suggest that they're going to get some new lenses? Should we move on? And can be applied during shooting. High quality shooting is possible by correcting optical aberrations caused by shooting lenses, etc. Without going through the PC software digital photo professional. Right, next one. By installing dual pixel CMOS autofocus in which each pixel functions as both imaging and phase difference autofocus, high speed continuous shooting of up to wait for it, wait for it, 7.4 frames a second with autofocus tracking and up to 10 frames a second with autofocus fixed, it fixed is possible, okay? So <laughs> I've got to laugh at that because that is, it, it's just not groundbreaking. It's going backwards. 10 frames a second, if you're lucky, and 7.4 frames a second at your normal rate. Oh wow, right, okay, let's move on. The high speed image processing of the video engine, Digic 8, Digic 8, I might add. So not even the Digic X, so Digic 8, and it's a brand spanking new camera, enables quick focusing with phase difference, autofocus, and smooth focus tracking for moving subjects when the corresponding interchangeable lens is attached. A distance measurement area of about 88% horizontal and about 100% vertical uh, of the screen is realized. When autofocus area is automatically selected, high speed and high precision focusing is achieved in the range finding area with a maximum of 143 divisions. Okay, um, eye detection. We have eye detection. Well, I'm, I'm using eye detection right now on the M6 Mark II, so that's not, it's not a groundbreaking thing now with Canon, um, but saying that it is nice to have. It, it gives you a verification that you're actually um, viewing this with eye detect on. And I love it, I think it's great. According to sources, the eye detect on the M50 um, has been, um, basically it's been improved Equipped with spot one point autofocus that focuses on an AF frame that is even smaller than one point AF autofocus. It can also be used during servo autofocus, allowing you to focus on small moving subjects. So that's that's pretty good um, in itself. But that's, is it enough for you to move on from if you had an uh, if you had a uh, M50 Mark One, would you would you buy the M50 Mark Two? Um, let us know down below. Um, it does have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connectivity as well, um, such as uh, well it, it connects to mobile terminals such as smartphones. Uh, supports high frame rate video recording in HD, 120 frames 
Um, a momentary event can be played back slowly and smoothly, albeit in manual focus. Comments about this. Um, so is the 4K still cropped? Uh, actually, yes, the 4K is still cropped uh, very slightly, whereas the M6 Mark II is not cropped and it's for full 4K and that's what we're videoing in right now. And that is fantastic. So if anyone wants a vlogging camera and hasn't got one yet and really wants to know whether they want to go for a Canon M6 or a, an M50 Mark II or a Mark I even, if you're on a budget, then I would wait. <laughs> I would wait. I would wait. Save up a couple of hundred pound more and buy yourself an M6 Mark II. And that's my feeling. Yeah, I suppose the other thing that I should point out about the M50 Mark II is uh, the fact that you can um, upright video, do an upright video, um, a little bit like a phone, and uh, generally for TikTok and stuff like that, um, if you use TikTok, uh, weirdly enough I don't, and personally speaking, I probably wouldn't use a video upright like that in my opinion but that's just me um, seems a bit odd to me that way but people do you know there's you know all to themselves and what have you uh, the other thing that's uh, quite important that I should mention about the M50 Mark II is also the fact that you can live stream with it on YouTube or any other format, I believe. Um, so it's, it's a good way of uh, live streaming. Are you getting value for money for this M50 Mark II? I mean, there are videos out there and I'm gonna just link one there. And uh, I was watching him this morning, this guy, and fantastic, brilliant. He, he nailed it on the head with, with what he was saying there. Um, and quite frankly, I, I am, I'm disappointed in Canon for this. You know, why, <laughs> right, I'm gonna end it here, right? Because why Canon, this is going direct to you, mate. Why have you concentrated on a mediocre Mark II camera when you really, you ought to be concentrating on the M mount lenses? Get your M mount lenses up and running. Get, get, Get us some really nice M mount lenses. Come on. Some, you know, when, when we're using third party lenses like Sigma, is that not a little bit of a, a kick in the doodars for you? Because we're spending our money on Sigma products. Get some nice lenses going, please. We want some nice fast lenses for this M mount. I'm not gonna carry on anymore. Guys, love your loads. Keep safe in this horrible time. Horrible time. Um, I'm feeling it, I'm really feeling it. I'm, I'm, I wanna go away very shortly. Um, I'm gonna be going to uh, the Lake District in a couple of weeks for the, for the autumn colors. Um, I look, I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, I'm going to go and show you guys where the secret mill is. So keep tuned because I will show you the exact spot and how to get there to this beautiful secret mill. And being autumn and having the autumn colors, it's gonna look pretty amazing, I hope. I just hope for some nice, nice, nice sunshine. Uh, so follow me on that one. All right, anyway, for now, I shall catch you all later, guys. And uh, thank you very much for viewing. Apologies for being so late on uh, a video and um, the next one will be promising to be a good one, as I say, for the Lake District. Um, I'm going to do my usual nice um, out and about vlog um, with the camera and all the gear. And uh, I shall catch you later. So thank you very much for watching. Um, it's been a lovely old job. Bye for now.